Today's video is brought to you by MyHeritage, an incredible way to build your family tree and discover your origins. More on them in a bit. South Africa is home to many incredible geological features. Some call it the cradle of humanity, where humans began our evolutionary journey to where we are today. It features the Veritafort Crater, one of the world's oldest and largest impact sites, estimated to be over 2 billion years old. But the region is far more famous for being the home to more than 80 gold mines and a mining industry that accounts for 75% of the world's gold production. One of these gold mines just happens to be the deepest mine on Earth. Today, Geographics is all about the Mpaneg gold mine in South Africa. Its immense 2,283 meter elevator, the region's incredible geological history, the so called ghost miners that have created their own economy in the depths of the mine, and the dangers of working in such a hostile and unforgiving place. Johannesburg, South Africa is situated above half of the Earth's entire gold deposit. In the late 1800s, when gold was originally discovered to be lurking beneath South Africa, people from every nation in the world rushed to the region in droves. Back then, gold was rumored to have been plainly visible on the surface, thanks to it being so abundant. Reaching nearly four kilometers beneath the surface of the Earth, the Mpaneng Gold Mine, located in Johannesburg, South Africa, is the deepest mine on the planet. It's considered one of the region's most potent sources of gold ore, producing more than 265,000 ounces of gold in 2018. When it comes to gold mines, not all are created equally. Most mines measure the quality of their gold by the average amount of gold found in the ore extracted from their rocky walls of the tunnels. Mines that produce high-quality gold ore are more easily able to extract that ore into the bars of gold you might be familiar with from watching films and TV. The easier it is to extract that gold ore, the more cost-efficient it is for a mining company to stay in operation. Extracting gold ore in this particular mine is no easy feat. But is it really worth the immense risk to its own? owners and employees? And the shortest possible answer to that question is yes. Yes, it is. The long answer to that question, though, is that it's a bit complicated. The most common form of measurement when it comes to gold ore is grams per metric ton, noted as GT. Most of the gold in the Mpaneg gold mine produces measures in about 8 grams per metric ton. It's worth noting that anything over 2 GT is considered to be good, so it's probably not conjecture to say that 8 GT is extremely good for gold mines. In present day South Africa, there are more than 80 different gold mines operating, but the Mpaneng gold mine is the biggest and baddest of them all. Naturally, considering that humanity has spent a century mining the gold deposits in the region, it's probably not a surprise that there would be some consequences, namely, what was once a plentiful resource is slowly but surely running out. In 2010, after a decade of intense gold mining operations, gold production in South Africa suffered a 45% drop. This in turn caused the price of gold to be hiked dramatically, and Mpaneng wasn't immune to that drop in productivity as most of the deposit beneath the site had already been depleted at the time. Back in 2010, the Science Channel was allowed to take a crew into the mines to experience Mpaneng's complicated and fairly secretive procedures for themselves. This resulted in an episode of the engineering documentary show Build It Bigger, hosted by engineer and professor Danny Forrester that answered many questions about the mine's day-to-day -day operations. It was this episode that suggested that the mine's gold deposit had only eight years left. Those eight years have come and gone, and while the gold mine isn't quite depleted yet, thanks to a project that extended the life of the mine, its future is still somewhat uncertain. In 2019, the company that owned the mine, Anglo Gold Ashanti, was openly looking for a buyer to take it off their hands. In 2020, ownership changed hands from Anglo Gold Ashanti to Harmony Gold, going for nearly $200 million. Unfortunately for the mine's new owners, seismic activity throughout 2020 caused multiple interruptions in the mine's operations, and in March 2020, one seismic event that occurred 3.5 kilometers beneath the surface led to the deaths of three miners, temporarily shutting production down. The Impenin Gold Mine has been expanded twice since opening in 1981 ranging from a depth of 3.16 kilometers to 3.86 kilometers by the end of 2018. The life of the mine has been extended to at least 2029. And before selling the mine back in 2020, Anglo Gold hoped to expand to a depth of 4.26 kilometers, although a combination of denial of funding and complications due to the worldwide pandemic halted any plans to expand the mine further.
Retired had it come to pass that half of the world's gold deposit ended up beneath South Africa. It's believed that billions of years ago, the entire region was covered by a lake. Gold deposits are thought to have filtered into this massive lake from surrounding river systems and bodies of water. Fast forward to around 200 million years ago, around the time when the end Triassic extinction event was busy wiping out 76% of life on Earth. It's thought that at this time, volcanic activity caused that giant lake system to be buried, sealing all that gold away. There is some debate about the cause for the end Triassic extinction, but some theories point to climate change caused by an immense increase in carbon dioxide from extreme volcanic activity. Almost all of the Mpaneng gold mine's ore is extracted from what's known as the Ventersdorp Contact Reef (VCR). Though the carbon leader reef, or CLR, is also an option for the mine, as it's only about 800 meters beneath the VCR. The VCR is situated around the northwestern rim of what's known as the Witwatersrand Basin. The VCR is where all of the mine's current activity is located. Both of the reefs that the mine sources its gold from are part of the Ventersdorp Supergroup, which is itself bordered by the Witwatersrand Supergroup. The Witwatersrand Supergroup is situated beneath the city of Johannesburg. The easiest way to imagine this is to picture all these different competing geological systems as being sandwiched right next to one another. From above South Africa, however, we can clearly see that Mpaneng gold mine is situated within the Witwatersrand Basin, not far from the city of Johannesburg. The Witwatersrand system refers to a major division of Precambrian rocks that are positioned directly over the Dominion Reef system and directly beneath the Ventersdorp system. These rocks can also be found in the north near the Vaal River in Clerksdorp and in the southern part of the region they can be found in Ventersdorp. However, thanks to all the mining activity in the area, a lot of the Witwatersrand Basin is covered by rocks from newer eras. Gold isn't the only valuable deposit lurking beneath the surface either. Uranium deposits are also of immense economic value to the region. All told, the Witwatersrand system is comprised of nearly 8,100 meters of rocky material. All of that can be divided up into upper and lower divisions, and those divisions even have divisions of their own, which geologists call series. The system is divided into three series in the lower division and two for the upper division. The upper division is comprised of the kimberley Arlsberg series and the lower main bird series, while the lower division consists of the Hospital Hill series, the Jepstown series, and the Government Reef series. The Government Reef series and main bird series are where South Africa's extremely large gold deposits are located, though the kimberley Arlsberg series also contains large deposits of gold as well. And speaking of extremes, the mine shocked scientists with the discovery of extremophiles living in its depths. Have you ever wondered where you come from? Who your relatives a few generations removed are? What they did? Where they lived? Well, with my heritage, the sponsor of today's video, prepare to shine a night on your past and learn something amazing. Personally, I'm not someone who knew a ton about where I came from, just vague stories from parents and grandparents, but nothing really concrete. So having my heritage has been amazing to add some real details to those vague stories. For example, my nan as a kid always used to tell me about how her father was a pilot in the early RAF in World War One. And you know, you never know with stories just what is embellished. Well, with my heritage, I found out that my great granddad was a lieutenant in the RAF. I found his handwritten records on the site for real, and that he was a part of bombing runs into Europe, which was pretty crazy, to be honest. Even cooler, my heritage found a picture of him posing in uniform, and it was kind of grainy, but they have this cool tool which enhances the photos. And at first, I thought, eh. There's going to be some like zoom and enhance stuff that doesn't really work, but apparently zoom and enhance is now a thing because it works amazing. And beyond that, my heritage can take old photos and colorize them and even animate them, bringing your history to life. My heritage has 16 billion plus records, so no surprise I found some amazing stuff about me. And it's the number one family history service in Europe. They make it super easy to build a family tree going back many generations. I already got as far back as the 1850s. So click the link below and you'll get a 14-day free trial to enjoy all the amazing features that my heritage has to offer if you decide to continue your subscription you'll get a 50 percent discount and now back to today's video Water is fed into the mine thanks to a large fracture in the rock wall. Miners have to be extremely careful around pools of water in the depths of the mine because it's directly heated by the surrounding rock walls in the mine's cavernous depths. The water is heated by the rock face to nearly 65.55 degrees Celsius, that's 150 Fahrenheit, the same temperature as the rock walls. But those scalding hot pools of water are precious because they're occupied by the mine's only true permanent resident, Candidatus desulfurudus or Dac. 
It's a species of bacteria that lives about 2.8 kilometers, that's 1.7 miles, beneath South Africa. What's interesting about these rod-shaped microbes is that they don't rely on the sun's heat to store energy. In the most basic terms, these extremophiles convert the chemical energy found in the minerals that comprise Mpanen gold mines walls, which itself is derived from the radioactive decay found in those very minerals. But when things get tough and there's not as much organic matter to consume, the bacterium will absorb carbon right out of formate, carbon dioxide, and carbon monoxide. This organism is very well adapted to the extreme conditions of the mine, and they're able to feed themselves by breaking down organic material and are even capable of recycling cycling dead cells. Formate is the base of formic acid, which is itself highly corrosive to metals and tissue. In fact, if you've ever been stung by a bee or an ant, you've felt the direct effects of formic acid on your skin. Formate is formed when formic acid loses one of its protons, a process known as deprotonation. This process creates a monocarboloxic acid anion. At the time of its discovery, this life form was quite the find, as it was our first real look at a single species ecosystem. Today, we know that the depths of the Earth's crust are teeming with life, extending more than 10 kilometers beneath the seafloor and as much as 5 kilometers beneath dry land. If it weren't for scientists wanting to explore the depths of Mpaneng in search of extremophiles, we might not have discovered the Earth's deep biosphere. In this way, Mpaneng gold mine has contributed to deepening our understanding of life on Earth. But the presence of an extremophile isn't the most surprising thing about the mine. If you were to drive past the Mpaneng gold mine, it would be nearly impossible for you to miss the towering cement building rising above the rest of the facility. Well, believe it or not, this is the world's tallest elevator, or rather, it's the world's longest. The Mpaneng gold mine's elevator drops 2,283 meters in a single descent. Though there is some debate and confusion as to whether or not elevators in mine shafts should be separated from those built inside buildings, at least when it comes to world records, that continuous descent is nonetheless impressive, as no elevator on Earth can come close to that claim. Even the Kingdom Tower, located in Saudi Arabia, if it's ever completed, will only travel 659.89 meters through the duration of its ascent. Servicing a normal elevator is a dangerous job. It's estimated that 14 people die every year working on or near an elevator. But servicing the elevator at the Mpaneng gold mine makes others look like child's play. Normal elevators require a counterweight. This elevator is far too heavy and tall for that. An entirely separate elevator is used as the counterweight instead. This means that any time an elevator is returning to the surface, another one is making the trek down into the mine. The elevator makes 300 lifts a day. The elevator can lift about 20 tons, and if you include the weight from passengers and all the gold ore that they're bringing up to the surface, that's quite a bit of weight for one cable to handle. For some trips, the cable must be strong enough to support the stress of 70 tons. The rope itself is composed of dozens of steel wires that are wrapped up with each other. Typically, elevator cables are somewhere between 0.6 centimeters and 1.9 centimeters in thickness. This cable is much thicker than that, and the only thing holding the cable in place is a single steel pin, though it's a pin that weighs 45 kilograms. In 1995, a cable snapped while transporting a group of workers into the depths of the mine. As a result, to prevent the cables from snapping, the mine needs to perform periodic stress tests on them. In order to do this, workers cut the ends of the cable and send it off to a lab for testing. Throughout the life of one of these cables, all of the trips into the mine and back out twist the cable in on itself. This causes the rope to become very tight, building up what's called torsional energy. The cable needs to stretch to reduce the amount of weight pulling on it, but the only way for it to do this is for the cable to increase its own length. But the only way for it to do that is to untwist to release the stored up energy. If it doesn't do that, it will eventually snap. But getting to the cable's a bit dangerous, as the crew needs to stand on top of the elevator to access it. They use a crossbeam to ensure that the elevator doesn't plummet all the way down once the cable is removed, and once the 45 kilogram pin is removed, the cable is taken out to an area just outside the elevator so a technician can cut into it. All that energy naturally wants to unravel, and the maintenance crew need to lock the cable down before any cutting can be done. An acetylene torch is the only way for the crew to cut through it, and even with the cable locked down with two different clamps, it's still a dangerous process because the cable will violently shake around once it's cut as all of its energy dissipates. Once the cable is cut, the piece can be sent off for testing and the elevator can be put back together so that mining operations can get back to normal. But the elevators aren't even the most dangerous thing about working in the mine.
Calling the Mpanen gold mine massive is a serious understatement because it boasts some other records as well, like the fact that it features more tunnels than the New York City subway system. But being so deep underground comes with major risks. Cave-ins, rockfalls, and tremors are all major hazards for workers to contend with thanks to all of the dynamite blasting going on in the mine's depths. The dynamite gel is mixed and tested in the depths of the mine itself. Ordinarily, one would need a scale to ensure that dynamite is mixed properly. But the miners at Mpaneg Gold Mine use a simple taste test instead. The acidic taste and subsequent shock that you might get from tasting a battery is a minor sign that the dynamo mixture is ready. A diamond-shaped blasting pattern is made using drill holes in the rock face. Three gallons of dynamite gel are pumped into those drill holes, and once that's done, the miners must retreat at least 304 meters back up the tunnel before any blasting can be done. During that detonation, each miner is instructed to plug their ears and keep their mouth open. If they don't, it's possible that the shockwave generated by the explosion could blow out their eardrums. Keeping the mouth open allows for the pressure to be equalized, and it turns out this is sound advice for anyone unfortunate enough to be caught near a bomb blast. Each blast advances the tunnel about 3 to 3.35 meters, that's 10 to 11 feet. Once a new portion of the tunnel has been excavated, the miners must hurry to reinforce it before it caves in from all of the pressure above, which could turn the blasting and drilling, which could potentially kill the crew. In order to hold back that immense pressure, miners create a grid of 33 different steel rods in the ceiling of the newly excavated tunnel. These are called split sets and function as giant screws that are driven 1.2 meters into the rock ceiling. Each of these rods is capable of supporting 17 tons of rock. The rods are installed with a combination tool that consists of a hose that cools down the rock with a constant spray of water and a motorized screwdriver as well as a hydraulic drill. All told, they hold back 227,000 kilograms of rock. Each blast carries the risk of causing rock falls and earthquakes. While the main tunnel is held back by rods, the offshoot tunnels that miners use to excavate gold from are exposed reefs that are much smaller than the main tunnel. Miners operating in these offshoot tunnels have to deal with at least 12 tremors a day, and to make matters worse, all this keeping 12,000 feet of rock from coming down on the heads of those workers are makeshift support structures made of wooden blocks that are stacked on top of each other. Funnily enough, they sort of look like Jenga. Each time a tremor ripples through the mine, the miners have to act quickly to reinforce the compromised areas. In order to do this, they use 1.2 meter tall steel jacks. While a part of the tunnel is being reinforced, all other blasting ceases. Each of these jacks can hold back about 10 tons. The mine has had its fair share of accidents, though. In 1995, one of the elevators in the main shaft plummeted into the depths of the mine, killing over 100 miners. Temperature is another safety factor. Because the mine tunnels are so deep into the earth, temperatures get up to a blistering 65.55 degrees Celsius. Ice has to be pumped into the shafts just to make working conditions bearable. The slurry ice allows for temperatures in the mid-80s, but the rock face and bodies of water scattered throughout the mine maintain blistering temperatures. And on top of all of these risks, the workers at the mine also have to worry about ghost miners. Bacteria isn't the only extremophile living in the Mpaneng gold mine. To some, the mine is not just a place of work, but also a place that some brave, or in some cases, insane people call home. In fact, these people have even created something of an economy as they bear the harsh conditions of the mine. The mine is plagued with so-called ghost miners. No, the mines aren't plagued with the ghosts of deceased miners. The term actually refers to would-be gold thieves who sneak past security to hide out in the depths of the mine, waiting for their chance to sneak out with a hefty gold and parachute. Waiting down in the pitch black darkness of the mine for extended periods of time causes their skin to turn gray, hence the term ghost miner. The reason these so-called ghost miners can sneak past security is due to their connection to powerful South African criminal syndicates, crime syndicates that specialize in stealing from the gold mines of South Africa. This criminal enterprise is worth a price tag of around $2 billion annually. It's gotten so bad that most of the gold available in the region is thought to be the result of criminal activity. But slipping past security is just the beginning, because getting around in the mine is not easy. It's an incredibly harsh environment. Security is also not willing to go after these people. The first the reason is that most ghost miners are armed, but the second reason is that when you're in a mine like Mpaneng, sound can travel a very long distance through its twisting tunnels. As a result, a ghost miner would easily be able to hear a security officer approaching them. These ghost miners refine the gold they mine from the cavernous depths of Mpaneng using mercury, and it has been speculated that many of them probably end up being poisoned as a result of this risky technique. The presence of ghost miners can be a lucrative thing for the workers at the mine, however, as in order to survive, these people will pay ridiculous prices for food and other goods. 
A loaf of bread, for example, goes for up to 12 US dollars. While the mine has definitely faced its fair share of difficulties, ghost miners, cave ins, and the threat of cable snaps notwithstanding, Mpanen gold mine still has some life left in it. But eventually, the valuable gold ore will be depleted and options for expansion will eventually run out. When that happens, the world's biggest and baddest mine, home to the world's tallest elevator, may close its doors for good.